Hello students, welcome to the seventh lecture of the Organizing in Times of Crisis course. Uh, the focus of this lecture is on new and alternative forms of organizing to counter the crisis. I briefly want to introduce myself. My name is Thomas Gegenhuber. I'm an assistant professor for digital transformation uh, in management at Leuphana University Lüneburg and I'm a researcher at Johannes Kepler University Linz. I study new and alternative forms of organizing such as platforms or more recently and I will talk about it later uh, the hackathon of the German federal government to counter the crisis. But let's get started. What are the learning goals for this class? I want to define with you uh, the core concepts uh, we use in this lecture. So you will get an understanding what is an organizational form, uh, what does a new organizational form mean and what does an alternative organizational form mean. Uh, we will inquire into platforms as in contemporary examples for new and alternative forms of organizing and we will outline the relevance of new and alternative forms of organizing for responding to a crisis. Let's start with defining what do we mean by an organizational form. We live in an organizational society. Along your life journey you encounter a lot of organizations. Kindergarten, school, university, employers. You might create your own startups. In your free time you can join associations, visit restaurants or bars, or if you want to travel somewhere, you can use public transportation, etc. From this enumeration, different images for each organization will come to your mind. These organizations operate differently, uh, have varying goals and organizing principles. They have a different form. We can define an organizational form as an archetypal arrangement of goals, authority relations, technologies, practices, structures and values, which require social acceptance and desirability in a given context. Against the backdrop of this definition, I will briefly discuss two examples to illustrate differences. You already gain insights about bureaucracies in the class 3 from Leonard Dobusch. Industrial factories are machine bureaucracies, a prototypical organizational form of the 20th century. They are centralized, they emphasize efficiency and profit maximization. They also have an elaborated division of labor, multiple levels of hierarchies, and clear descriptions of how tasks are distributed and integrated. In comparison, universities are what Henry Minsberg would call a professional bureaucracy. The main goal is to provide education. In Germany and Austria, they are mostly publicly funded. Rather than standardizing processes, this organizational form rests on standardization of skills. So for teaching, for example, you need to have certain qualifications. Universities are also rather decentralized. Within the given setting, uh, there is freedom in research and what we teach. And in universities, self-governance also plays a strong role. Having established what we mean by an organizational form, we now turn to understanding what we understand by a new form of organizing. So the question is really, what does new mean? I subscribe to a relational and a sociological view of newness. In such a view, the meaning of what is new is understood in comparison to already existing organizational forms we experience in our day-to-day -day life. Recall the definition that we use to define an organizational form. Now I want to focus on the last part of the definition. When something new emerges, 
stakeholders may not understand the new organizational form. Uh, they might be just skeptical or uncertain about its value. Hence, novel organizational forms need to receive sufficiently positive social evaluations in the eye of stakeholders, such as consumers, investors, media or regulators. Social evaluations encompass that stakeholders issue expressions of social acceptance, that is legitimacy, as well as desirability. Without social acceptance, new organizations would face a lack of flow of resources from stakeholders and risk that they perish. Let's apply this idea of understanding newness to organizations who want to provide knowledge to wider audiences. The first example is, and now I'm talking about the old business model of Encyclopedia Britannica. And, and the old business model was, let's make the knowledge about this world available in a series of books. And in this case, there was a bureaucracy in place that hired experts to write entries for the encyclopedia. Those entries were put into the books and those books were sold to the end consumer. Microsoft and Carter emerged in the 2000s and it has more or less the same organizing model. So there's still an organization in place that collects all the knowledge. The difference is the distribution. So instead of books, you could have the knowledge about this world on a CD that you put in your uh, personal computer and then you could browse for the knowledge more quickly and it's far more usable and it's faster than just walking through different books. The third example and the most novel example that all of you know is, is Wikipedia. And at the time when Wikipedia emerged, it was really novel because it rests on an open call to the crowd. Uh, so individuals who feel they have knowledge about a certain domain voluntarily write entries for the encyclopedia. Today, Wikipedia as a go-to to get initial information about an issue is widely accepted. But when it emerged, it really needed to gain social acceptance and it faced a struggle to convince the public of its value in comparison to existing organizational forms, such as this article snippet from Nature Illustrates. That Wikipedia, according to some studies, did well in terms of accuracy, certainly supported the cause and the reason that were. Hence, it is not surprising that the Encyclopedia Britannica sought to push back that Wikipedia was almost equally valuable in terms of accuracy of its entries. The Wikipedia example certainly also demonstrates that new forms of organizing often rely on information technology. An example of Wikipedia enhances our capability how we can organize knowledge creation and dissemination processes. To give you another example, let's have a look at the predecessor of Wikipedia. Uh, the Mundameum was an institution which aimed to gather all the world's knowledge. It was established in 1910 by the Belgian lawyers Paul Audley and Henry Lafontaine. The Mononeum has been identified as a milestone in the history of data collection and management. You could even telegraph inquiries um, about something you want to know and it interests you and then someone from the organization would answer you uh, to your inquiry. But this is certainly an effortful process and the limited technology at the time inhibited the effective production and dissemination of information. By using the internet, Wikipedia can in principle broadcast a call to everyone with an internet connection say, hey, please help us with writing articles. This does not necessarily mean that everyone responds, but the available technology makes it easier broadcast a call, reach a lot of people, and also to process the contributions. It also makes it easier to disseminate the knowledge 
among those who seek information. And for further information about broadcasting call and, and this crowdsourcing dynamics, I also refer to the reading that you have at this class. Digital exchange platforms are a frequently used example uh, for a new form of organizing. What are exchange platforms? Exchange platforms facilitate transaction or the exchange of other valuable goods, information or opinions between, between at least two parties. Uh, for example, Airbnb connects travelers, so the demand, with hosts uh, who supply uh, flats where you can stay. Uber, uh, for example, connects consumers uh, with taxis. And another example would be uh, the Google Play or the iTunes Store, um, which is a platform that connects uh, consumers who are in a demand for applications with the supply that is app produces, that produce the apps uh, the consumers desire. The novelty of this organizational form becomes apparent in the statement from Kenny and Sisman. It's a provo provocative statement. Uh, if the Industrial Revolution was organized around the factory, so a machine bureaucracy, today's changes are organized around digital platforms. And if you think about the world's most valuable companies, uh, you will realize uh, that many of them draw on platforms as organizational form to create value. So I think there is some merit behind this statement. What makes exchange platforms new? To answer the question, I, I want to briefly have a look at Airbnb. So the existing form of organizing that's dominant in the hotel and tourism industry is hotels. So you go somewhere, uh, buy and pay for the room. And what Airbnb legitimated is that there are hosts who rent out room to strangers and also we as consumers got used to, hey, we can book a room for a stranger. And of course, uh, such transactions and trust. So Airbnb has a rating system in place to establish trust. There is a strong identity. So people know who you are from your pictures and you can verify the identity. And they also have insurance in place. And although Airbnb gained legitimacy in the eyes of its users, it does not mean necessarily that everyone is happy with the business practices. Um, so here I want to show you a picture uh, from a campaign of local activists in Berlin that question Airbnb's business practices. We also see that a lot of city governments realize that some or quite a lot of users misuse Airbnb for commercial purposes. So it's not about sharing, it, it's really creating uh, hotels in a gray zone without uh, paying the taxes and the dues and, and keeping and being in line with regulation. So there's pushback here from the regulators. It is time for a brief break uh, push uh, the pause button. I want to explore with you the inner workings of this organizational form in more detail, again by drawing mostly on the example of Airbnb. So we talked about the purpose of exchange platforms facilitating interaction between the supply and demand side. So the supply, the hosts and the demand for the travelers, the resources Exchange platforms are really about resource orchestration. So it's making an open call. We need to mobilize the hosts. Then we need to sort them and then we need to evaluate, evaluate them base them on a rating system. And then we have super hosts and normal hosts. And, and there's difference what hosts do we show when someone looks for a place to stay. Then there is a certain way how they go about control. So the main issue is about how do I ensure as Airbnb when someone looks for a hotel that I have a match 
and can I book it right away? So there is prediction happens, happens through, through probabilities. The idea is if we have a large enough network of hosts, we can ensure good match. Then certainly algorithmic governance uh, plays a role. So they use the data traces, they identify unwanted behavior. Uh, this is also in relation to the interface design. So what do we see and who do we see and what do we not see when we look at the platform? They always have rules in place. Uh, so which rules do you need to follow when you are a host on the platform? Which rules do you need to follow when you are a traveler? Uh, the strategy for platforms is always increased network effects uh, and they use subsidies and incentives for that. So uh, we know um, on Airbnb, the more travelers you have, the more interesting it, it is for hosts to be on the platform. The more hosts there are, the more interesting is it is for the travelers. Uh, the value is higher. And on Airbnb, in terms of subsidies and incentives for host incentives are if you're a super host you get sh more shown in comparison if you're not a super host because super host you get if you have a better rating um, in terms of in subsidies uh, travelers pay a higher service fee than the host so the hosts are subsidized in the case of Airbnb then certainly strategies to increase the quality of the interactions so you want to make sure the trust mechanisms works that there always a match happens um, so what airbnb does when you sign up for airbnb as a new host uh, they want to ensure that you activate the instant booking function so it's similar to a hotel and another strategy is once you have a certain consumer and, and database and you know what's going on that you add ad additional interactions for example airbnb is not only offering offering a place uh, to stay but now you can also book experiences in certain cities and management is different uh, in a sense of management you see as a network market or community organizing you can see it in the language that it that they use it's very informal it's encouraging uh, this does not mean that they issue control or pressure hosts to do what they want but it's uh, packaged in a different language and without going into too much detail this differs from how a regular hotel chain would offer the services and i just give one point or two examples uh, for example, a hotel chain like Marriott, if you think resources, they don't orchestrate them, they control them. Uh, so they control certain steps of a value chain, they own the hotels. Uh, in terms of control, they want to establish uh, a good service and prediction through hierarchical control. Uh, they have employees, they know they can deliver a certain uh, service quality. And this is just a different way of organizing uh, in comparison how Airbnb does it. Before I turn to alternative forms of organizing, I just want to briefly give you some other examples for new forms of organizing beyond platforms. Uh, one example are ad hoc networks and communities. Here we would think about hackathons and bar camps, which are fluid forms of organizing where people come together uh, to create new ideas or exchange knowledge. Then there are hacker collectives uh, such as Anonymous or um, new infrastructure provider, co-working spaces. And we certainly could make this list even longer. But now I really want to turn our attention to alternative forms of organizing, which we still need to define. And you will read the article, or you already have read the article from Maya and Ruttert. And the definition they provide is alternative forms of organizing to really demarcate themselves from the profit-driven corporation. Uh, and alternative forms of organizing emphasize the social purpose and contribute to the common good. Four ca characteristics Maya and Ruttert provide is that alternative forms of organizing 
pursue multiple social and economic goals, that they attend to local needs or uh, attend to the needs of the commons, that they marshal underused resources or they make do with the resources they have, and that they experiment with democratic forms of decision making. And Johanna Mayen Rotted also provides some examples and varieties of alternative organizing with social purpose. And one example, uh, for example, if you look at cooperatives, uh, if you think about social housing and what local need do they attend to, uh, if we organize it as a cooperative and we're not focusing on profit, we can provide affordable housing for citizens uh, in a city. Uh, to provide further examples for new and alternative forms of organizing, we certainly could put Wikipedia also in this category, but I want to provide you a more contemporary form uh, that brings together new and alternative forms of organizing, and these are platform cooperatives. I also put you a link to the platform called Movement down here, and I encourage you to explore more of that. But one example is the platform Up and Go. Up and Go is a platform, so a new form of organizing that brings together people who want their house cleaned, uh, together with uh, brings together with the uh, supply of people who do professional cleaning services. And Up and Go is a cooperative, uh, so it's not also not only a platform, it's also a co cooperative. And the difference to the venture capital driven platforms is on a venture capital driven platform that offers cleaning services, workers need to pay around 15 to 20% commission fee. Um, here at Up and Go, it's just 5%. And this 5% that the workers a pay for each uh, work they get to the platform is really used uh, for platform maintenance. So here you see a difference to how a commercial platform would operate or up and go that really tries to ensure as much as possible a decent workplace for its workers. So the interesting element about platform cooperatives is to repeat the combining the newness and efficient organizing of platforms with the principles of alternative organizing, namely embracing the principles of cooperatives. But this organizational form faces also a lot of challenges and also alternative organization in general face certain challenges. And the three challenges are balancing the mission and avoiding mission drift. So we know from the literature, from social enterprises, it often happens that the economic goals take over the social goals. So the economic goals become more important. Um, the second challenge is the gaining legitimacy for a new category or of the new category of platform cooperatives. So if a commercial startup or platform fails, it's taken for granted. Uh, and even sometimes failure is appreciated. Uh, or and if but if an alternative organization fails, uh, it's a threat to an entire category because then business observers or the media says uh, cooperatives, this is just not a model that works. Uh, we told you uh, cooperatives are in inefficient. And what these kind of organizations also often lack, and particularly platform cooperatives, is uh, a lack of ecosystem and field infrastructure. So the current ecosystem favors the development of commercial startups or commercial venture-driven platforms. And there is no ecosystem at university how to teach about to create alternative organizations or social startups and also a subsidy or um, a financing base uh, to scale these kind of organizational forms. And I want to continue my lecture with now thinking about 
how do these new and alternative organizational forms um, aid in resolving the, uh, the, the crisis? And remember the first class from Elke Schüssler when she talks about an exogenous shock uh, can be a driver for change. And, and Maya and Roger are arguing the same. Uh, if the institutions break down and if an issue gains salience, um, this might be a trigger for alternative organizing. And indeed, uh, we do see this happening. Um, there are new and alternative organizations uh, to tackle the COVID crisis. For example, there are several organizations which try to organize neighborhood help and they follow the very platform principles that we talked about. Uh, on the one hand, there is people who are in need uh, for people who help them and other people that are willing to, for example, go shopping um, and to help those people. And these platforms uh, facilitate the information and bring those people together and connect them. Uh, I encourage you to look at uh, wirgegencorona.com and this is one of many initiatives that's taking place here in Germany. And as you know from Daniel Geiger's lecture, crisis makes people to improvise or try out new things. And uh, the German government just hosted a massive hackathon with uh, over 25,000 people participating. It resulted in 1,500 ideas. 20 projects were awarded. And not only is the hackathon an, a new and alternative uh, form of organizing, but this hackathon, this working focused for 48 hours on resolving the crisis, resulted in many projects um, working on um, solutions for the problems that we face today because the current institutions broke down. And to give you another example, which is not strictly speaking a new alternative form of organizing, but I also want to mention this because you have more on this topic uh, on entrepreneurship uh, in, in the class from Ali Gunesai, but we see startup pivots and CSR initiatives happening. Happening, For example, from Mehlen is a company from Lüneburg that normally produces equipment such as earphones, headphones, uh, and now they use their network in China of the producers to uh, rapidly bring uh, face masks to the market. I put the links in there so you can get a sense of this, but more uh, on the issue of entrepreneurship in one of the, in the uh, lecture of Ali. And this also brings me to your exploration. Uh, you are now equipped with the knowledge about new and alternative forms of organizing. And for your assignment, I encourage you to use uh, the Wir vs. Virus Hackathon as an inspiration uh, for projects that uh, emerge there. Um, you can also follow this link. Uh, this link was actually used by the hackathon organizers before the hackathon to collect a variety of initiatives that already exists uh, and these are mostly new and alternative forms of organizing uh, to help each other out uh, in this time of crisis and provide the social good. I also give you another background reading. Um, if you want to know more about platforms, I suggest that you read the article of Elstein et al. I put you uh, the link here. In sum, I do believe that new and alternative forms of organizing, ranging from self-organized neighborhood help platforms to platforms that connect 3D printer and maker movement with hospital that urgently need, need some supply, make a difference in, in tackling the crisis we face. How big the impact is, and, and uh, I think that's too early to tell. Uh, but we should follow them, we should look at this and we should contribute and, and hopefully uh, these new ways of organizing have impact beyond the crisis that we face today. Thank you.